Hey everyone, it's Caitlin and welcome to another video. This video is going to be a chats with Caitlin. I actually haven't done one of these in a really long time. So to briefly explain, I'm just going to be talking with you guys if you want to play this while you're doing something in the background or, you know, grab a meal, sit with me while I blabber slash so try to cohesively form sentences. Uh, you can go ahead and do that. If that's not your thing, feel free to not watch. Um, but today's video, I've been wanting to talk about for a while um, and I feel like it's really relevant in the times that we're all living in today. And today's video is revolving more around comparison and the comparison trap. And as someone who works for myself, especially in the creative industry, I feel like this is something that I really struggle with a lot. I think I need to fix the lighting. Half of my face is looking a little Voldemorty. Okay. I think that's better. But even if you don't work in the creative field, I feel like this applies to you because at the end of the day, human beings, our minds love to categorize things and compare things. So we're constantly compartmentalizing and comparing our lives with other people's. And especially in today's age of like instant knowledge and social media and technology, there is so much for us to compare ourselves to where it becomes very overwhelming. And I heard this anecdote I think in a podcast, I really can't remember if someone knows where the original source is, please let me know. I'll be happy to credit it down below. But someone was giving an example of comparison and they said, you know, especially with small business owners, say just for a specific example of me in the food blogging niche, like I think I'm in order to be successful, I need to do A, B, C, D, E, F, G, you know, the list goes on and on. But in reality, what is happening is that I'm looking at four different people and being like, oh, person A has a killer Instagram feed and they get really great engagement. Person B has really great Google presence and they come up in every Google search. Person C maybe is filming really artistic videos and they're killing the YouTube game and person D just makes the most delicious looking recipes and I really wish that my photography looked as good as them. So I'm looking at all of these individual cases, but my mind is also grouping them together at the same time. So now I'm thinking that in order for me to be successful, I need to have a killer Instagram, have an amazing blog, film the most beautiful videos and have amazing photography because I'm just choosing the highlights of all of these people and now thinking that in order to be acceptable in terms of social media and presence and whatnot, I need to be doing all of those things. But in reality, those people are each excelling in one category. And obviously there are people who excel in a wide variety of things, but I think that's just a good comparison um, to talk about comparisons. Because at the end of the day, social media is like this in every aspect of our lives. It's like you follow people who you admire and you look up to, um, and odds are you're not just following one person. So in our minds, we're sort of creating a list of all the things we are aspiring to be, or maybe the foods we are aspiring to make or what we want our homes to look like. And at the end of the day, we are seeing these highly curated feeds and our minds are curating them even more, I feel like, and grouping them together. And we feel like every aspect of our lives need to be perfect. And just for me personally, I do struggle with that to a certain extent. Um, this really affects me in my business. Um, I fall more into like the initial example that I gave, like I have all of these peers in the food scene who I really look up to and I totally admire their work. So I'm not bashing their work or discrediting them. Um, but for some reason, it's very easy for me to look at someone else's account and point out all the things that they're doing beautifully and really appreciate it. But at the same time, feel like my work can never compare to them. Um, it's a very common thing among creators and artists, but, and I know it's also like ridiculous because I have a really big YouTube presence. I have a pretty big Instagram account, like my blog does really well. And so it's like objectively when I look at it, I'm like, I really should not be getting down on myself. I've turned this into a successful business and I make a sustainable income. But at the end of the day, even I fall into it and I feel like my content isn't good enough. Um, where it's like, oh, but my food doesn't look as perfect as this person or my YouTube videos like I'm just filming them by myself. I don't have a production team. So they don't look like TV shows like some of the other accounts we see on YouTube that do really well. And yeah, sometimes I just look back and edit my vlogs and I'm like, oh my gosh, my house is a total 
mess. <laughs> and then it like, it makes me feel more self-conscious and like, I'm not good enough. Um, but then on the other hand, I come back and tell myself, but it's like, I feel like with my channel, I try to promote things that are more realistic and show my real life. Obviously what I'm showing on here is still curated. I'm not gonna show all the negative things and like arguments I get in with my fiance because like no one wants to air their dirty laundry basically, um, but things are good generally. Uh, so I also just feel like people might appreciate my content because it is more real. And one of the main approaches of my blog is to make plant-based food and just recipes in general more accessible and still cost effective while still tasting good. Because I feel like in the vegan community especially, there's a lot of emphasis on really expensive ingredients or spending a lot of money on kitchen tools or mostly ingredients, um, which is, you know, fine every once in a while, but I also realize that the majority of the population does not have that kind of money to spend. So I still wanna make vegan food that's delicious and accessible for them. So. I also think that in some regards, it's kind of refreshing almost to see my content. And when I do see other channels that show more realistic content, like they show some lived in mess, um, their lives aren't totally perfect, like they're filming themselves without makeup on, like things like that, it is refreshing to me because it feels like more real life. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm still self-conscious about it. And I feel like also at the end of the day, the social media algorithms, still favor the accounts who portray a perfect lifestyle in their content because one it is more aesthetically pleasing and two i feel like society as a whole isn't as aware about all of these nuances like we're just consuming them where it's like you just want to follow pretty feeds because they're pretty to you, obviously, versus you might not go out of your way to follow a feed that looks more realistic if at the end of the day you don't realize that those people's pretty feeds are actually just a highlight reel of their lives and not realistic. So it's just like, it's a tricky gray area in social media. And you know, since I've been at home, like most people self isolating since like almost the beginning of this year, um, you spend a lot more time by yourself and with your thoughts. And also, cause we're not like leaving our houses, I'm definitely spending more time online, like following new accounts and looking at other people's like seemingly perfect lives. And it does take a toll on you. And just in general, my business, I feel like I could always be improving and like my content is not good enough. Um, but also at the end of the day, I do mostly everything myself. I have a few people who help me behind the scenes, but I also need to recognize that people who have more curated feeds and more high production videos are paying a whole team of people. And for me right now, I'm trying to save more money and do more things myself versus outsourcing because um, I have some personal purchases and like investments that I want to buy. So this is like the path that I have chosen versus maybe they have more of a higher production cost, but their work looks really great and more people are into it. Or maybe it's just my perception that more people are into it. See, I feel like I get totally in my head about this, but I wanted to film this video, just like chat and share my thoughts with you guys because I feel like a lot of people have to be in the same situation as me. And maybe we're not totally aware of our thought processes and how things are cycling, but like if we really look at our lives and we're like, oh, I'm like tired of the way my house looks, or just for me personally, like I've been sitting in my house all the time. So I'm staring at things and I'm like, oh, I don't like this, or oh, I wanna change that, or oh, this doesn't look as good as that person. But I'm like, but those are highlight reels. And like, if I'm following interior designers on Instagram, like it's their job to make their house look good. And at the end of the day, like when you go to the quote unquote average person's house, it usually doesn't look like that. And it's like, we're also, there's so much going on in the world right now. It's so overwhelming. Um, yet somehow it's so easy for me to get caught up in these like tiny little things. And I feel like in some regards, it's almost easier for me to think about those things than think about like the global pandemic, systemic racism, child trafficking. Those are all really heavy and big topics. And honestly, it's like really upsetting to mentally process them and it's a lot for your mind to go in because I feel like once you fully realize the extent of these things and how they're affecting my life and just the, li the lives of everyone in the entire world, it's really 
heavy. And it's definitely something that's necessary, but if your mind has a choice to think of something trivial or think of something that's really upsetting, it's gonna cause you to feel anxious and upset, it's probably gonna choose a trivial thing. <sighs> so that's kind of where I've been at during everything that's going on. I'm definitely trying to stay woke. Eh, I, I don't really like that word. I wouldn't use that word to describe myself. I'm trying to stay active and like aware of everything that's going on, but it's also just a lot to process. And I feel like kind of not stuck, just like a little mentally exhausted, which I think we all should be feeling if we're doing the work. And I think because of that, I have really haven't been as present on social media. Like I've still been posting content, but to me at least it feels a little more impersonal. Um, kind of because I have my own like things that I need to work out before I even feel like I can share more personally with the rest of the world. So this chat transitioned from like, don't compare yourself to other people to like, wow, there's so many depressing things going on in the world. But like, that's kind of just been my thought process. There's so much going on. And I feel like when I feel down or overwhelmed about so many things, I start to nitpick my own life and like how I'm not good enough. Um, it's one of my personality flaws. But the main reason I wanted to film this video <laughs> This would not be all depressing and sad, but just say like at the end of the day, you too, if you are struggling with this or comparing yourself to someone else, um, one, please know that everything you see online is a highlight reel. Like even if this person shows their normal life and it's pretty realistic, like I'd say some of my vlogs and stuff are really realistic. I'm still only showing you the mostly positive things. Like there have been days where I've been filming vlogs where like Dylan and I will be out on a hike and we'll get in an argument in the middle of the hike or like a bicker, you know, just using this as an example. Or I'm about to film and I'm like, oh my gosh, like my countertops are completely covered in crap. I need to move it. So even though it looks slightly messy, it was still messier before I filmed it. I'm just saying like, Honestly, I think it's pretty much impossible to completely accurately show your everyday life online um, in any regard because it's always going to be curated whether you're filming or someone else is filming because it's from their perspective. So please just know that when you're consuming content online, I feel like most of my audience is pretty aware of this. Like you guys are cool. I like having more in-depth conversations with you and you all seem to be very intelligent. Not that other people aren't uh, intelligent. Maybe perceptive is a better word. Like, I think because I show more real kind of messy content, like you guys maybe appreciate that more versus if my life was perfect, maybe you would nitpick me more if you thought my house was dirty. I don't know, <laughs> but just know at the end of the day that one, it's your life. It's never gonna be exactly the same as anyone else. Well, I already said one, so those two, but and also just really keep in mind what I said in the beginning, the whole ABCD thing. It's like, you do not have to be perfect in every aspect or every regard of your life at all times. It's pretty much impossible. I don't think that's ever gonna happen. And also just like, maybe it would even help to just like pick it apart and realize it's like, well, I think my house needs to be perfect because I follow this person. But at the end of the day, they have a whole team helping them and they're not as good as cooking. So I don't have to have a perfect house and perfect style and a perfect relationship and perfect self-care time, like all this stuff, because I'm just consuming bits and pieces from other people and then assimilating it into what I think social media is telling me that I need to be versus what I am right now and what I am right now is already good enough. Did that make sense? So, yeah, I think that's all I have to say. Um, as always, this is a ramble. I don't plan these out. I just kind of like to talk and have a authentic chat with you guys. I feel like if I planned it out, it would come across as less authentic. I don't know, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, I still struggle too. My life is not perfect. I hope you guys don't think my life is perfect. That's definitely something that I never want to portray because I feel like it can be so easy to get caught up in social media and think these people have perfect lives. And I would never want someone to idolize something that they think I have, when in reality, I don't have that at all. Um, so yeah, hope you guys enjoy this little reality chat 
rattly that, that, that I cannot talk good time to end the video uh, thanks for watching I know these videos like don't get as many views as my other videos but at the end of the day I kind of miss like connecting with you guys on YouTube um, and doing this more so who cares like really if it doesn't get more views if it can just like positive, positively impact like one other person that's really what I want to do so yeah thanks for watching let me know if you want more chit chatty videos like this and normal food content over zoom in the next video but I still want to do these in the future okay bye